Hi everybody, in this video we are going to discuss feedback controls. We will focus on transfer function, control properties and the impact on systems performance in the time domain. So frequency domain analysis and S domain analysis will not be discussed. Let's start with different controller types. In general, this is our feedback system, which consists of a plant or process which has to be controlled. And why is the output? And this process is controlled by a controller C. And the reference minus the output Y is the error, which is the input for the controller. And in most industries, um, we use a PID kind of a controller. And the P stands for the proportional pass, so proportional to the error, the input of the controller. The I is an integrator and the D is a differentiator, so taking the derivative of the error. What we also see is that we see combination of these parts, so P, PI, PID, um, these kind of controllers. We will now look into the properties of these different controllers, as I said before. First of all, we start with a P control, the proportional controller. And the transfer function of a, pro, a, a proportional controller is the output of the controller divided by the input, which is, in this case, only a gain, the gain KR, which is a proportional factor. So we have a gain, a um, transfer function, which is only a number, so a gain KR, and the input is the signal E, the error of the controller, and this is the output of the controller, which is the input of the process. So in a time domain, it says that the output is equal to the input, the error, times the gain KR. So if the error is a step function, so a constant value times the unity step, that is this function, 1t, in that case, the output is KR times that input. So suppose we have an input signal with a gain of 2 and our gain is 3, then the output signal has a value of 6. Quite easy. P controller. The advantage of a P controller is that it's a fast controller, but the disadvantage is that the offset, so the end fold in a static situation, is not zero. So you always have an offset. A PI controller has a trans transfer function like this. Transfer function is the output of the input, which is equal to KR times 1 plus 1 over S times tau I. KR times 1 is the proportional part of this PI controller, and KR times 1 over S times tau I is the inter integral part of the controller. So we have a proportional part and an integrating part, and you see that 1 over S, which is an integrator in the Laplace domain, is situated over here. So that's the I part of the controller times KR. We can also put it another way. When we use uh, only one fraction, then we have KR times 1 plus S times tau I divided by S times TI. And tau I is the integration time constant. So how do we make this kind of controller? Well, we have the gain KR over here. And then we have the proportional part over here and the integration part 1 over s times tau i. Tau i is in the denominator over here. That's the integration part. So we add these parts together and then we have the output of the controller. A rule of thumb could be there are uh, a couple of uh, ways to tune a PI controller. Rule of thumb could be that the time um, constant tau i it should be that it's about the largest equal or somewhat greater than larger than the largest time constant of the process. All right, in the time domain, it says that the output x is equal to kr times the error, so uh, the proportional gain times the input, which is the error, plus kr over tau i times the in integral of e um, integrated towards the time. So 1 over s. Uh, is in the S domain an integrator, so the function in the uh, time domain is this uh, differential equation. Well, how does it look like, uh, for instance, when we apply a step, a unit step, to the input of the PI controller, then we see two things happen. We see that the output is KR times 1, KR times the input, which is 1, the step, and plus, so we add kr over tau i times the integral of that step, which is equal to a time function t. So we have a constant part 
in that output function and we have a time depending part which is linear um, to the time t so that is how the response looks like we have a proportional part over here so kr and then um, we have the integrating part over here which is a function proportional to the time a linear function proportional to the time and at the time uh, t is tau i we see that um, this is equal to kr plus kr to the proportional part so we end up at two times kr that's a pi controller um, the advantage is that we have no offset in the end situation so um, looking to the static situation due to the integrated integrating part we see that there is no offset so no static error that's a big advantage however there are also a kind of uh, a couple of disadvantages um, the integrator makes the response of the pi controller slowly than only a p controller uh, the integrator has a negative impact on stability because it's slow and it may lead to oscillations in the system where you have a stick slip um, mechanics so then the uh, static end value is never reached but there is a kind of an oscillation around that end value okay then we have the PD controller this is transfer function of the PD controller it says that the output divided by the input is equal to kr times 1 plus s times tau d and remember kr times 1 is the proportional part and kr times s times tau d is a differentiating part and that uh, can be seen uh, by this s because that's the laplace transform of a derivative okay so tau d is the time different uh, the time constant of uh, the d part of the controller so we can um, make a pd controller like this we can say well the error is the input we feed that by the proportional part kr over here the proportional gain and so this is only the p action the proportional action and kr times s times tau d it's the derivative action and a rule of thumb could be that you choose the tau d uh, smaller or equal to the second largest time constant of your process the advantage of a pd controller is that it's much faster than only p control and that is because we have a derivative action over here so that derivative action um, acts on changes in your input signal and that makes that pd controller really fast it's also more stable because it has a phase lead because it acts that quickly and the offset might be somewhat less than only p control the disadvantage is that when you have a step input signal well then it, it tries to respond on the derivative of a step which is an impulse and that is not um, quite a good idea so in practice in motion control systems avoid step input signals for a d controller and it's sensitive for high frequency noise noise is often in a high frequency uh, domain of the spectrum which means that the contribution of the derivative action is higher to that high frequency noise so that has to be taken into account in the time domain um, the output of the pd control looks like this is kr times the error plus kr times the differentiating time constant tau d times the derivative of the input which is the error so suppose that uh, my input to the um, pd controller is a ramp so it looks like for instance e is t times the unit steps so it start off at uh, t is zero and then it has a um, ramp function like this then the output is kr times t plus kr times tau d because when you um, fill it in over here then we have kr times t which is the uh, proportional part and the integrating part is kr times tau d times the derivative of that uh, ramp function which is a constant value one so we are left over with kr times tau d so suppose kr is 5 and tau d is 0.1 second then we have the output function which is equal to x is 5 times t plus 0 0.5 and that is what we see over here we see the input which is the ram function over here and um, the 
P controller contribution is 5 times T, which is this straight line, and due to the D action, we see that offset over here, which is 0 0.5 in this example. So due to that D action, the reaction to the error is, in, the, in this example, a step, which you see over here, and that uh, yields a fast response and only a P, a P action. Okay, um, in order to um, avoid the impact of high noise in your system, we often use not only um, a, a clear PD controller, but a so-called tame PD controller, which is also called a lead controller. And in that case, we add a low-pass filter to that PD controller. So here you see the transfer function of that tame PD controller. And what you see over here is the transfer function of this uh, standard PD controller, as we discussed before and uh, an extra transfer function added to that PD controller is a low pass filter which is in this case 1 over 1 plus tau d over 8 times s so it's a low pass filter which filters that noise you could also say well um, we divide uh, we define tau d over a as b times tau d and in that case b is what we call the tameness factor so a tame PD controller also called a leaked controller is a standard PD controller with a low pass filter to um, avoid a high impact of that high frequency noise. And typically um, the B is somewhat between 0 0.05 and 0.167 as a constant factor. So it has one pole, it has one zero, and we can make it like this. This is the standard. PD controller and in front of it we put that low pass filter over here which is in this case 1 over 1 plus B times tau D times S which is uh, situated over here. So how does um, that low pass filter function? For instance how, the smaller the A factor will be so the higher the B factor will be uh, the smoother the response of um, the output of that tame PD controller will be when we compare it to a standard PD controller. So the advantage is a comma less responsive uh, output to disturbances than the PD controller because of that low pass filter which we added to the system over here. And because many um, systems in our motion control area has um, high frequency noise, we often use uh, lead controllers, tame PD controllers instead of uh, standard PD controllers. Well, when we put everything together, we have a so-called tame PID controller. And in that case, we have this as a transfer function in which you can see the proportional part over here, the integrating part over here, the differentiating part over here, and the low pass filter of the tame um, D action over here. And we can define tau D and tau, uh, tau I as discussed before. So the, off the uh, advantage of a same PID controller is that you have no offset um, caused by the integrating action and it's almost as fast as the standard PD controller. So let's uh, compare all these um, controllers uh, uh, with each other and I've done that with this plot. And in this plot I put um, a step to all of these controllers and this is just one controller type which I have implemented for the different controller types but you see that things are really different for the, diff diff for the uh, several types of controller. What do we see? Well this is a standard I controller so an I controller is a PI controller with a P factor of 1 and what you see over here is really slow this, so never use only an eye controller with a proportional gain of one. So let's zoom in on the P, PI, PD, tame, PD, and tame PID controller over here. And we see the dynamics and the first two seconds happen in this example. So when we zoom in, we see the following. The green curve is the curve of the P controller. And you see over here that it has always an offset because it never reaches uh, the end value of the step which I've put as an input to the system. So we have always a static error, what we call an offset. When you uh, apply a PI controller, you see that that offset goes to zero. So it reaches um, the end value. So there's no end, static end error 
anymore compared to the, only the peak control, what we expected. But what you also see is, you see more overshoot in this case, and that is uh, caused by the integrator. So um, it has a kind of negative impact on stability. When we use uh, this one, the uh, Cyan colored PD controller, then you can see that we still have an offset because there's no integrator involved, but we have a really fast signal and we have no overshoot in this example. When we make it same, so to uh, suppress high frequency noise, it's still uh, as fast, but hmm, that low pass filter gives me some kind of um, overshoot in this example over here, so that um, low pass filter causes, um, let us put it that way, has a, a bit of a negative impact on stability. And this is the curve of my tame PID controller. So it has no offset, it's um, still really fast, but it shows more overshoot. So uh, your system requirements determine which kind of controller you should or you can use. So summarized, conclusion. All controllers need a proportional gain, a p-action, to uh, reach the overall performance. And if no static error is allowed, then you should use an i-action. But be sure um, an i-action slows down the response and it is worse with respect to stability. I don't know if it's a problem, but you should be careful because an i-action always has a negative impact on stability. On the other hand, a D-action speeds up uh, the response and it creates a phase lead, which is good for stability. So a D-action has, um, with respect to response and stability, some good properties. And a tame uh, D-action, so when adding an extra low pass filter, it limits our frequency gain and that is good for noise rejection. Well, that's it about feedback controllers. I hope you had a good overview in the properties and how they respond. Thank you for watching.